welcome to this week's piece so this is just a sweet little blanket chest um i did try and sell it as is there's a few scars and marks and stuff on the top that we're going to handle um i took it to a show i had three of them in stock and two of them sold this one was left over so we're gonna get this one all fancied up and see how well it does after that Now the inside is in excellent condition with the exception of the tray. It is fully broken um, and it's not going to function well to hold the top open. So I actually do something else with these trays. I have another one that I'm getting ready to redo. So I'm going to take this out and put it with the other and do something awesome with those. To get started, I'm just going to tape off the center diamond. I want to keep that. That's part of the grain that I really, really love. I love the details in it. So I'm going to tape that off so that I can keep that and then paint around it. Since I happen to have my really thick tape right next to me, I just run it along the line and then kind of split it, obviously unevenly down the middle, so that I can use one piece to do the same thing. I don't want to waste too much tape. You guys know I don't like using tape anyways, but sometimes there's an occasion such as this where I end up using it because I don't want to have to freehand this part. So I just split that tape once I get it on there and that way I can use it for both sides and I know that it's the right length. I'm going to give this a quick clean with the liquid sandpaper. Um, I've already wiped it down, so I'm not too worried about it, but just anywhere that I'm going to be putting paint, I want to make sure that I get that liquid sandpaper on there just to take off any gloss or anything. So that's why I'm doing it in this order. It's, it's not to really clean it, it's just to kind of degloss it to give me a good base for my paint. The top was a bit rough, so I'm actually going to sand this all back and restain it to match. I didn't do anything too aggressive. I believe I just did 220 throughout the entire thing and had went through three sheets of sandpaper. So this is a pretty easy sanding job. So I'm using my one coat polyurethane to go over the edge of the tape here. And this is to prevent bleed through. Um, I grabbed this one because it is so thick. I want to make sure that it's covering any part of the tape and not going to let anything bleed through at all whatsoever. So a thinner poly can sometimes let that happen. Usually it's, you don't have to worry about it, but sometimes. So I figure the thicker one would be better in this case. So I'm just going to put a coat of that all around the blue tape. Um, you can see I'm going kind of all over the wood there. That's just because I don't want it to have a different texture in some spots versus other spots. So now moving back to the top while we're waiting for the poly to dry, I'm actually using a water-based stain. So you'll see me spray the entire top down with water first. That's because I want to control how dark this top gets. I'm using dark walnut. Um, and so I went through, added this one on, and then once I wiped it back, I was like, okay, I can do another coat. So I did two coats of the stain on the top and that brought it back to the color to match the rest of the top. Now 
For my base on this, because I want it to be a little lighter, I'm gonna go in with Mellow White and give this two coats. I will let this dry overnight because I'm going to be doing a lot of really wet blending with a natural bristle brush. So I wanna make sure that this is really, really, really dry before I start doing that because I don't wanna run the risk of pulling the paint back. And in between those coats, I'm just going to take the same top coat and seal the entire top of this. I like doing this before I get into the crazy painting, just in case I get anything on it, I can wipe it back. So I went through my stash and pulled out Iron Gate, Goblin Gray, and Forest Shore. And then I'm using my very largest blending brush. This is uh, the large round from Chalk Mountain. Um, it's good for doing those giant swirling blends. So this here, I'm using very little paint. I am dipping my brush directly into the pot, but I'm just barely getting the bristles. And I'm using a ton, ton of water to get this smoothed out because I don't want full saturation with the paint. I just want to create this kind of weird, swirling, stormy mist type situation. So anytime it goes on too dark, I'll add just a little bit more water and spread it out from there. This is very, very forgiving. You can always add more water and come back to it later. Add more colors on over the top. This is just tons and tons and tons of layers. So you just keep doing them, keep building them up until it's something that you like. If you're finding that your paint is coming up and you don't want it to, let it sit overnight again and then you can come back and add more layers of blends until you get it to where you want it to go. And then when I very first start, I'm fine with spraying the piece, but from there on out, after I start getting colors on, I don't want to spritz the piece anymore because you'll get the little dots of water, which is kind of annoying, the overspray look. So I will spray directly onto my brush after I get the colors laid down because I don't want to get any of the overspray on the paint because as you are swirling in, it will pull up just those teeny tiny droplets of water, which is really annoying after you've done all the work. So you can avoid that just by misting your brush instead of the piece itself. And as far as color placement goes, I'm kind of keeping it a bit darker around the edges and letting it lighten up as it comes in. But aside from that, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever I feel, whatever I want, I'm just going with it. And if I don't like something, I go in with another color and change it to that one. Once I'm finished with my painting, I can go in and remove the tape. I like doing this when it's still just a little bit wet. And then the wood wipes back really, really easily because it has the previous finish on it. So I just take a damp cloth and I can go through and clean up any excess paint that's gotten on there at all. So I'm going in again with the same poly and I'm sealing the entire piece because I'm going to go in with another step and I want to make sure that in case I don't like it, I can take it back. So for this part, I'm taking my glazing dusts and I'm just doing a custom color, something that I like. I don't want it too warm and I don't want it too cool. So I'm just going in and mixing it up. This is not very overpowering. It's very subtle. So you'll see it when the light hits it and it'll add just a bit of a tint, but that's about it. And I'm doing the same swirling motions, but this is going all over the entire body with the exception of the diamond on the front. This also adds another layer of protection because it is of course mixed with poly.
I want to add a little more interest to this so I'm taking the poly that I already mixed up with my glazing dust and add quite a bit more gold so the more glazing dust you have in the poly and the less amount of poly obviously the stronger it gets you can do this super super strong or you can do it very subtle like I did on the top coat um, but for this I wanted this to be quite a bit stronger I added more gold and used obviously less poly and that intensifies it um, you can go even stronger than this but I wanted to be able to build up so I'm going around with a small detail brush and doing the little trim portions Now for an added layer of protection, I like going in with my furniture wax polish. Um, you can do a regular sealing wax, whatever you want, but I like to add this to pieces that are going to get a little extra banged up. So for this one, I'm doing it with steel wool. This could be an end of the bed blanket chest, which would get next to no use at all, but I also envisioned it possibly as a mudroom situation. So I just wanted to make sure that it was protected and then for the center diamond I just took the same wax and steel wool and kind of coated that to give it some protection as well and it also just makes that grain pop a little bit more once that is absorbed a bit I just go in with a clean cloth and buff everything back Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. I don't have it fully staged yet, but it's gonna look lovely in the pictures to follow. So I, I love it. I think it is just, I love all the swirly blends that it is. I love the depth and the outer corners. I just, I think it is so fun. And this is super easy. You guys saw it. it's just putting down your base layer and it's, almost a typical blend only you're using much less paint and quite a bit more water so it's a little bit like the watercolory but just a little bit more than that it's in between it's in between a traditional blend and like the watercolor over the florals that we did so this is a great chest i haven't decided so this isn't a lane cedar chest it is Oh, I can't remember the name. I'll take a picture of it on the inside. But it does have this locking thing, which is um, a safety issue. So I might unscrew the top part of the latch on the inside and then sell it with it. But telling the person if they want it to do that, they will have to put it on themselves. That way I'm not contributing to somebody getting trapped inside. I don't want that. But it is lovely. I love... So I love the gold down on the bottom. It's just a hint. I think this gold right here is a smidge too overpowering. So I might take a little bit of silver rub and buff and maybe go over the top of that just to tone it back a little and make it um, a little more matchy with the background, if that makes any sense. Um, I did do just a teeny tiny touch on the wood here, which you can barely see just in the light, but it's just a nice little something so you can see where the light hits it there but it runs along the whole way. So this is a very just subtle everything. We kept the best part of the wood here. The top was lovely just because it was an easy refinish and I only had to do the very top. I didn't have to sand back all of this, which you know is always grand when you don't have to hand sand everything. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and thank you so much for following along and being here and leaving all your guys' comments. Also, thank you for sticking around because last week's video, I forgot to turn the music down to the background. And I know a lot of you <laughs> were upset about that. I'm sorry, I am a one person show, so sometimes I overlook things. Um, but hopefully this week I will have that dialed back like it is normally. All right, pictures to follow. I'll see you guys next week.